Welcome to our lecture on IFRS 16 leases. Before we look at the content of today's lecture, you will identify that there's quite a lot of sections that will be tested at an awareness level. Now, when we look at awareness for SICAS principles of examination, you should still be able to process basic transactions. But from a timing point of view, guys, unfortunately, I will not be able to work through all of these sections with you. I will not be able to work through every single line with you in the notes. You need to please do this on your own and ensure that you are comfortable with all of these sections. Now, when we look at RFRS 16, first we need to identify if there is a contract. Once we are able to identify if this contract is a lease in terms of RFRS 16, RFRS 16 will indicate to us and provide us with our principles on how to account for this lease in our records of our lessee as well as our lesser in terms of our initial recognition and measurement, as well as our subsequent recognition and measurement. Guys, you are able to work through the contents page on your own for me, please. What I want to indicate to you is that I have included the disclosure notes, our templates, at the end of your notes for you to be able to take them off and study this separately, need be. In terms of the questions that you can expect, as always, incorporated, you can expect anything and you still need to know your IS12 principles very well. Then it is also important that you are able to use your calculator properly. And number two, in terms of our leases, you need to ensure that you understand your amortization table. You need to be able to perform journal entries, calculations, as always, discussion questions, very important and then your presentation on the face of your financials and your disclosure in your notes. Your definitions will be included in your Appendix A. Guys, bear with me, I will have to read through some of these definitions with you to be able to explain them to you. Now, the first definition, our commencement date. This will be the date when our lesser provides the underlying asset, remember we will refer to our asset in RFRA 16 as an underlying asset to our lessee. Then RFRA 16 indicates to us in the records of our lesser, our lesser will recognize either one, a finance lease or two, operating lease. In the records of our lessee, our lessee will recognize one right of use of an asset and important a lease liability. Then RFRS 16 indicates to us that when we look at our fair value, that our fair value in terms of RFRS 16 is not exactly the same as per our RFRS 13 principles. Now the fair value of RFRS 16 refers to the lesser accounting requirements. The fair value refers to the amount for which an asset could be exchanged or a liability settled between knowledgeable, willing parties in an arm's length transaction. Now, what I want you to identify when you read through information, when they provide you with your fair value of your asset, at initial recognition, that this fair value will be used to calculate your interest rate implicit of your lease. When they provide you with a fair value at the end of your lease term, you need to identify, now guys, question mark, you need to identify if you need that fair value to be able to calculate your lease liability in your lessee's records. Before we look at the residual values included in RFRS 16, the definitions, I just briefly want to recap our definition in terms of IS 16. Remember that the residual value of our asset will be the estimated amount that an entity would currently obtain from disposal of the asset if the asset were already of the age and in the condition expected at the end of its useful life. Therefore, as always, look at my timeline. Remember that 
we expect a certain selling price at the end of the useful life of our asset to be received. Now, when we compare this to our residual value in terms of IFRS 16, you now need to apply the same type of principle, guys, between our lesser and our lessee. Remember, in this contract, our lesser will provide an underlying asset to our lessee for a certain period, years. Now, in terms of IFRS 16, our residual value guarantee will be the, a guarantee made to a lesser by a party unrelated. Therefore, this party can also be our lessee. A lessee is not related if it doesn't meet our IS24 criteria, guys, to the lesser that the value of an underlying asset at the end of the lease term will be at least a specified amount. Therefore, guys, this residual value guarantee can either be provided by our lessee or by any other third party which is unrelated to our lesser. The residual value, and I'm going to include this now in brackets, guys, bear with me. The residual value guarantee will be the selling price that our lesser expect to receive at the end. Remember, expect to receive at the end of the lease term. Now, when we look at our unguaranteed residual value definition, that portion of the residual value of the underlying asset, the realization of which by a lesser is not assured or guaranteed solely by a party related to the lesser. Therefore, guys, this will be the portion that our lesser does not expect to receive. This is not guaranteed. Therefore, the selling price, remember guys, think about the selling price. If we say, for example, that our lesser expects to receive a certain amount at the end of the lease term, there can be a portion of that which is not guaranteed. Okay. Then guys, an important thing that I want you to please include in your notes, that when you read your information, you need to identify if ownership will transfer to your lessee. Now, this will be important in terms of your lease liability calculation, and you will understand this once we work through our examples. Interest rates implicit in the lease. IFRA 16 indicates us, yes, my famous words. Okay. The interest rates implicit in the lease will be the present value, the PV of our minimum lease payments plus your unguaranteed residual value. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't actually prefer this word unguaranteed residual value. Once you look at the questions, you'll understand exactly why I tell you this. But your interest rate implicit will be your present value of your minimum lease payments plus your unguaranteed residual value, where this will equal your fair value of your leased asset plus your initial direct costs of your lesser. Therefore, this will be the rate where our present value of our minimum lease payments will agree to the value of our Asset. Now, when you read the given scenario, you need to identify if they provide you with the fair value of your asset at commencement date. If yes, you will be able to calculate your interest rate implicit of your lease. If no, guys, if they do not provide you with us, you need to use your incremental borrowing rate to be able to calculate your lease liability. Now your steps, when you identify in a question that you need to perform details in terms of your lease. 
First, you need to obtain your interest rates in place of your lease. You need to calculate those. If you can't calculate those, you need to use the incremental borrowing rate. Second step, you need to calculate your lease liability. And third step, you need to calculate your right of use of your asset. Then when we look at our gross investment in the lease, remember that this will be when we have a finance lease and this is in the records of your lesser. FRS 16 indicates our gross investment will be our lease payments receivable by the lesser under a finance lease plus your unguaranteed residual value accruing to the lesser. Now, guys, important to identify, hey, when you look at residual value, that residual value actually relates only to your lesser. Why? Because your lesser will be the entity or person that the receives the selling price. Now, guys, I'm including selling price at the end of the lease term. Your lessee will be the entity or the person that pays that amount. Net investment, guys, this will be your gross investment discounted based on your interest rates implicit of your lease. Now, I'm pretty sure that you are familiar with these terms, very similar to IA17. And, and finance income will be your gross investment minus your net investment. Your net investment will be your gross investment discounted based on our interest rates implicit of the lease. Then I just quickly want to work through the lease incentive. Remember, a lease incentive will be payments made by the lessor to the lessee associated with that lease. Therefore, it is important that you read the information, please. Lease modifications, guys, based on an awareness level, but you still have to know this. Now, this will be when there is a change in the scope of the lease or the consideration for a lease that was not part of the original terms and conditions of the lease. Therefore, guys, when you look at this scope of the lease, you need to identify that this can be the squares per meter. This changes made or guys the consideration if this change is made in terms of the consideration this is the money this will be our payments you need to be able to identify this lease payments i'm going to work through this now guys i'm not going to work through this in detail when we look at our initial measurement now in terms of lease payments very similar the four, first four items for our lesser as well as our lessee. Payments made by a lessee to a lesser relating to the right to use an underlying asset during the lease term will comprise of one fixed payments, less any lease incentives, important, plus variable lease payments that depend on index or a rate, plus the exercise price of a purchase option if the lessee is reasonably certain to exercise that option, and payments of penalties for terminating the lease if the lease term reflects that the lessee exercising an option to terminate the lease. Then, important guys, and you can include another plus, and this can be your number five. For the lessee, a lease payments also include amounts expected to be payable by the lessee under your residual value guarantee. Remember, when you think about this, we have our lesser, we have our lessee. Now, if we expect that lessee to take ownership and our lessee will have to pay an additional selling price to the lesser at the end of the lease, lease agreement. That amount should be included, sorry guys, not included, included 
that amount should be included in your calculation of your lease liability. Then for the lesser lease payments also include any residual value guarantees provided to the lesser by the lessee, a party related to the lessee or a third party unrelated to the lesser that is financially capable of discharging the obligations under the guarantee. Guys, this is in the records of your lesser. Okay. It is important that you identify these differences. Now, let's just briefly recap our principles. Remember, in your lessor's records, your lessor will have to determine is this a finance lease or is this an operating lease. In your lessee's records, our lessee will have to determine our interest rates implicit of the lease. Our lessee will have to determine the lease liability and three, our right of use of your asset. Now, included in your lease liability calculation as your future value. Now, please don't get confused. Future value and fair value. This is now the future value. Included in the future value, you will have to include that expected amount that your lessee will have to pay to your lesser. Now, guys, again, important that you please read the given scenario. The contract can also stipulate that your lessee will have to pay a final payment. And that final payment can then be included as your future value. Or your future value can be your residual value guarantees. Think about the expected amount that will be paid by your lessee. Incremental borrowing rate. If your interest rate implicit is not available, you need to remember that you will have to use your incremental borrowing rate. Now, what is this? The rate of interest that a lessee would have to pay to borrow over a similar term with a similar security, the funds needed to obtain an asset of a similar value to the right of use asset in a similar economic environment.